Hey friends, thanks for coming by the Wildcat Comms channel. Appreciate you checking us out today. Uh, it's been a while since I made a video. This winter has been uh, pretty hectic between two and a half feet of snow on the ground up in the mountains where I live and being freezing ass cold every day and having some sick elderly family members moving in with me and my wife. Uh, had a lot going on, but I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos even though I haven't been making any. And one thing I noticed is that uh, some of the bigger um, preparedness, self-reliance, gun tuber, whatever we're calling them, channels. Um, I've been talking about radios a lot, which is good. I think there's um, a lot of interest in the topic and uh, a lot of people starting to get into the hobby, which is awesome. But one thing I did notice uh, is that people have been talking about and sometimes recommending um, trash radios, just straight up garbage radios. And so uh, much like buyer beware in the radio world, I want to talk for a minute about viewer beware. Uh, and first of all, you know, this isn't really about um, shit talking anybody because obviously I saw these videos, I subscribed to the channels, I get a lot out of these dudes. Um, a lot of them know what they're talking about um, in certain subject areas and I respect them. So this isn't about that. Um, but, you know, like I said, viewer beware. Um, you know, sometimes these guys are not really radio guys. And so um, you should take their radio advice with a grain of salt or maybe not not at all, just for entertainment purposes, okay? And I don't begrudge guys with big channels who have a lot of content to make. Um, that's not really what I do. I mean, heck, the last video that I put out uh, was almost maybe four or five months ago, but, um, you know, I had 20,000 views, which is big for me. I don't even, at this point, I think have maybe 2,500 subscribers or something. Um and so for me, it's quality and not necessarily quantity, but I don't begrudge guys that have a big channel and need to put out a lot of content. Um, but one thing I want to talk about is um, some of the crap radios and some of the good radios that you should be thinking about. Uh, this one video that I saw a couple weeks ago was like a kit video, and it was all right. Um, some of it was good. The antenna included in the kit was awesome, really good antenna. So if you know the video I'm talking about, um, Go buy that antenna. It was rad. <laughs> buy two of them. I got three. Um, but the radio was trash. And I'm talking about this TalkPod. Uh, this is like an A36 Plus or something it's called. Yeah, A36 Plus. And this radio is garbage. It's basically um, a toy. It's like a glorified kid's toy. Uh, in fact, when I'm done with this video, I'm going to send this off to my buddy um, for his 11-year-old son to use on their farm. They have a GMRS license uh, for their family. Um, so there's that. Now, full disclosure, I got this radio for free last summer from the TalkPod company. They sent it to me. They wanted me to review the video. At the time, I thought it was insane. I hardly had any subscribers. I hadn't really put out a video that broke like six, 7,000 views. So I thought, that's number one, it stinks like desperation, but whatever, I'll check out the radio. Um, you know, I did a mini review and the synopsis is, it's a brick, the battery life sucks, the menus are garbage, um, the screen is awful. And uh, you hook it up to a spectrum analyzer and you see that it's all over the place. Um, I'm holding it now and like the battery's falling out almost, so it's trash. Um, you wouldn't want to use this radio in your kit for real, okay? Um, and it's, this isn't about uh, knocking on inexpensive radios either, okay? I have uh, a bunch of inexpensive radios. This Beofang here is, you know, $25 radio. I've got a bunch of these. Um, this Quan Shang is $29 and this is pretty much like my number one budget radio right now that I'm recommending. Um, you know, real quick, you can download a firmware upgrade for this radio that will totally unlock it and make this $29 Quan Shang radio 10 times this Beofang could ever hope to be. Okay. Um, you can reprogram uh, or disable the, the light, the menu, uh, the buttons on the side, like all the stuff that you wish you could do with this Beofang, um, you can do with the Quan Chang and more. This is awesome. So it's not about knocking on budget radios any more than it is knocking on big channels and talking shit about them. Um, but it's funny to me that some of these same channels, um, you know, guys are rightly so talking about how um, it's really important to train with your gear and how, um, you know, you don't necessarily need to have Gucci gear. You just need to train with the gear that you have. But when I see guys out there talking about like the talk pod, um, it tells me a couple of things right away. First, um, much like me, they probably got the radio for free from the talk pod company because they're in this self-reliance gun tuber 
you know, whatever preparedness channel space. And um, they're trying to get free advertising for the radio, so they're sending them out to people. I don't begrudge anyone for using a free radio that they got um, and reviewing it. That's cool, but, um, you know, you shouldn't pass it off as like, this is the radio you want in your kit, because you don't want that. Um, and I also don't begrudge guys, like I said, that have a lot of content to make. Um, so there's that. Um, but, you know, it tells me right away that they're, they probably got the radio for free. And the other thing it tells me, though, is that they're probably not training with the radio. And what do I mean specifically by training? Um, in the radio world, you know, training with your gear doesn't really mean, uh, you know, putting this inside your play carrier or putting it in a pouch in your backpack or whatever and just hiking around with it. That's not radio training, okay? Um, I'm talking about real-world public service events. We, we talked a little bit about that on the channel, uh, or we've alluded to it. I haven't really done a public service radio yet, but I need to because it's springtime, and um, it's probably the best approximation that anyone can get on training with their radios. What do I mean by pu public service events? Um, fun runs, marathon races, um, marathon bike races, and um, you know, search and rescue events and things like that. At the ultimate level, probably either a search and rescue, like real world mountain search and rescue, or probably more available to the every person watching this channel, stage rally racing. Uh, Subarus and other modded cars going down dirt roads super fast. Um, those races, those events are all run by ham radio operators. And in stage rally, um, lives and property hang in the balance. That's no joke. Uh, we had a, I had did a video where we talked a little bit about some of the different public service events. I very briefly talked about how you know, you might sprain your ankle at a 5K fun run and need the radio operator to get the medical people over to get your sprained ankle taken care of or something like that. But in a stage rally race, um, cars are going 100 miles an hour in dirt roads. Um, spectators get hurt. Um, competitors die. Uh, a couple years ago uh, at the New England Forest Rally up in Maine, uh, one of the co-drivers, Erin Kelly, lost her life. Uh, God rest her soul. She lost her life at the at the rally race. Um, that that's a real thing that happened. Uh, uh, that radio operators had to deal with. And I think two years before that, um, a professional driver Ken Block he rolled his car a couple times and went into the woods and started everything on fire. Um, thankfully, he got out. No one was hurt. But you know, property and lives hang in the balance. It's a real real deal event it's probably like i said except for search and rescue mountain search and rescue it's probably the closest approximation to some of these emergency scenarios that you're training for or thinking about training for that you can get it's free um and uh it's super super helpful what you're going to experience when you do a public service event are things that you could never experience just hiking around um the national forest for the day or taking your radio hiking or camping for the weekend um, you're going to be out there all day in the weather or in a rally race for three days. You're going to be out there all the time in the weather, different kinds of weather, hot, cold, rain, mud, whatever. You're going to know right away, uh, does the battery life suck? Uh, is this radio easy to program? Um, is it, like, does it break immediately when I drop it and the antenna snaps off or the battery breaks off and you can't, um, doesn't hold the battery anymore? Um, all of these things and more are going to come out uh, when you start doing testing for real um, at public service events. When people are counting on you is when stuff usually goes wrong, right? Um, and so that's why you need to be doing actual training with your radio. And, you know, I don't think some of these dudes are. And that's okay because, like I said, they're just making videos. It's cool. So if you're already a radio person or and have your gear squared away or you're just watching the videos for entertainment... No harm, no foul, man. Um, you know, whatever. Check out a radio video where some dude's using a, a, a crappy radio. But if you're thinking for real about spending money and, um, you know, getting a good radio or building your kit, um, you know, maybe you want to take these people's advice on some of the topics that they are bona fide experts or certainly have a lot of experience in. Um, you know, a lot of these dudes out there um, are military guys, so they know a lot about that. But listen, we all kind of agree on the gun tube space that, like, you don't need to take shooting training from Navy SEALs, right? Like, you can take training from civilian guys or whatever um, that are 
legitimate and know what they're talking about and have good fundamentals and can uh, teach you effectively. Um, you want to also get radio advice from guys like that too. Uh, maybe you think of me that way. I'm certainly trying to be super serious about this. I'm not the biggest expert you'll find, but certainly think I'm taking it seriously and trying to be that for people. So there's that. Um, you're never going to see me doing uh, shooting videos where I'm telling you to take my advice super serious on that kind of stuff because I'm a civilian. I don't know about that. Um, so think about viewer beware um, and where you're getting your your radio info from when you're thinking about putting a serious kit together uh, or buying a serious radio, right? Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Again, 29 bucks is not a lot of money for a radio. And let's be real, to some guys, my number one radio in the field is this Yezu uh, FT60, $149, $169, whatever this radio is, it's also not a lot of money. Is this going to be the first radio you buy? Probably not, because if you're just starting out and or you're on a budget, maybe this Quan Chang is the first radio that you should buy. Um, but this could be the last radio that you buy because it's robust, has a good feature set. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've dropped this and it still works. It's rained on it and it still works. I dropped it in snow and mud and it still works. All that stuff, um, you know, this is the last radio that you'll want to buy. Maybe not the first. So think about that kind of stuff when you're building your kit and putting that all together. But more importantly, think about how you're training and whether or not the people that you're getting radio advice from are actually training with their radio and not just you know clipping it to their pack and hiking around their property or going camping in the national forest for a weekend or whatever that's using the radio that's not training with the radio there's a huge difference um, so anyways I appreciate you uh, stopping by as always um, hope to have some uh, new videos coming out soon now that it's spring um, we're going to pick up where we left off in the fall. We're going to talk about data bursts a little bit more. We're going to talk about um, certainly about training with public service events and like how to get into that. Um, we're going to continue to talk about getting licensed because that unlocks the world of ham radio for you by, if nothing else, getting you a call sign so you can participate fully and talk to people. Um, and all of that kind of stuff. You know, we'll obviously do more kit videos because they're fun and people love them. And, you know, who doesn't like gear and stuff like that? So I uh, appreciate you, as always, stopping by the channel. Uh, thanks for your time today. Hope you have a great day. And thanks for checking out the Wildcat Comms channel.